Hello everyone, welcome to funnel2tunnel.com. Welcome to the third video of the series of nine videos which we are doing based on the cargo calculations and pre-store plan, the principles and procedures on board bulk carrier. Like you said, we have already solved two examples of the deadweight calculation. This is the third and the final example in which we are doing the deadweight calculation. So like we have discussed previously that there are three steps of loading cargo on bulk carriers. Step number one is how much cargo to load, which is done by means of performing dead weight calculation. Step number two, where to load the cargo, and this is done through devising a storage plan. And step number three, which is the final step, that how to load the cargo, and this is done through devising a loading sequence. And as you know, we are discussing currently step number one. And uh, like I said, this is the final example whereby we shall be doing a dead weight calculation. And after that, based on this example and the two previous examples which we have covered in the videos, we shall be going forward and devising a storage plan using the loadicator and followed by the loading sequence, which again will be done using the loadicator. Just in case you have not followed the video, you can always check out the previous videos on the same topic, the link to which is provided in the description below. I would highly recommend seeing those videos first and coming to this video so as to get a better understanding and clarity on the topic. So without further ado, let's read the voyage instructions for example number three. For example number one and two, you can click the link in the description. Here are the voyage instructions. Dear Captain, with respect to your next employment, please prepare urgently stowage plan basis follows. The cargo, iron ore pellets, 60,000 tons plus minus 10% more or less in owner option. Load port is one safe berth Murmansk, Russia and maximum draft is 12 meters at a density 1.020. The discharge port is one safe berth Hansa port Germany whereby there are no draft restrictions but the density is fresh water that is one. Now the charters have already stated to us that they will be bunkering 415 metric tons of VLSFO at Murmansk and they want us to revert on the urgent basis. The range of loading the cargo is from 54,000 to 66,000 tons. Let us move ahead. Let's collect some information. For loading port Murmansk and discharging port Hansa port, check the following. The location of the port and the applicable load line zone, also the voyage route, the water density at both the ports which has already been provided to us by the charters and the agents in the voyage instruction and any other limitation at the port which must be obtained through the local agent charters or any other information source at hand so like i said in this case the agents at loading port has already advised us that the draft limit at murmansk is 12 meters so let us go to the load line zone chart and check the location of Murmansk and Hansa port. For your ease, I have already marked it. Murmansk is in Russia and it's a very, it's a high latitude port in the Arctic Circle and it's a tidal port. And then we have Hansa port in Hamburg, Germany. I've also marked the route. So both the loading and the discharging port, also the route plan lies in the winter zone. So with load line zone, we are very clear that the whole voyage exists in the winter zone. Also for your information, I have marked limit of 60 degree north and this is the Ica area. So south of 60 degree north is an Ica area whereby we need to use the fuel having sulfur content 0.1% or less. The north of 60 degree north is not an Ica area as per the annex 6 so so in order to simplify it for the leg from murmansk to 60 degree north we shall be using vlsfo and for the leg of 60 degree north till hansa port germany we shall be using lsmgo i hope it clears if you have any queries do write to us in the comment section below and we shall be happy to help so let us obtain certain data from the trim and stability booklet whereby we should only be considered with the winter marks and the limits so winter marks the draft is 14.185 and the displacement that is a winter displacement of the ship is 92658. Let us calculate the point of limiting draft in the voyage. By now you must be very much aware of the limiting point of the voyage or the limiting draft of the voyage. 
but still we will go by the rules we will go by the book and the correct procedure and we'll make a table and see that whether uh, we are able to determine correctly the limiting point in the voyage but like i said with common sense you must be able to know by now that what is the limiting point in the voyage so since we have already defined the route of the vessel let us try to obtain the point of limiting draft of the voyage and this is a very important step and shall be calculated with utmost care but like i said with common sense by now by reading the voyage instructions and the discussions which we had so far you must be aware now that what is the limiting point of the voyage and the limiting draft of the voyage always make sure in all the cases the point of limiting draft determines the draft to which the vessel must be loaded to and you should always be aware of that so for our ease let us pick up a certain data from trim and stability booklet of the ship whereby we have been told that the draft limitation or the restriction at Murmansk is 12 meters so we should pick up data or the displacement which is corresponding to 12 meters draft in this case it is 77214.36 so let us make the same table which we have already made in the past two videos that's why i would again highly recommend you to go back and watch those videos because in this video we are moving pretty fast so we have discussed the format of this table in our previous videos i will not be going through this through the contents of this table rather we would just jump into filling up these two columns that is the calculated displacement and the calculated draft one thing which is very important in this situation in this voyage is at departure murmask we have taken four days of port stay also as per the voyage instructions we shall be getting bunkers of 415 metric tons of vlsfo which shall be added to the onboard rob's of vlsfo so as to give us a picture of how much vlsfo shall be there on departure the same is the case with lsmgo however in this case we are not getting lsmgo bunkered so rob vlsfo is 1518 and lsmgo is 250 on departure murmask also the maximum draft allowed at the murmask is 12 meters which is a port restriction and corresponding displacement to 12 meters is 76837 at a density of 1.020 then we have got eka area which i have taken just for my reference but to be very frank it will not play a very pivotal role in planning the cargo reason being maximum draft allowed is 14 decimal 185 and maximum displacement allowed is 92658 and finally hand support arrival whereby the maximum draft allowed is 14 decimal 185 because there are no draft restrictions the only draft restriction for the ship is the winter load line mark so by looking at this column we are very much clear and we are very much aware that what is the limiting point of the voyage or the limiting draft of the voyage and that is nothing but the departure murmansk or the port of murmansk whereby we have got a draft restriction of 12 meters and displacement allowed is 76,837. So in this case, we need to plan the cargo basis departure Murmansk. This is the only limitation in this voyage. So let us go ahead and check. So how do you calculate the cargo at Murmansk? Let us check the displacement at 12 meters and that is 76,837. By the way, this 76,837 displacement is at a density of 1.020 so it's a corrected displacement minus a light ship gives you a dead weight minus vlsfo lsmgo the quantities which we have taken at departure minus fresh water which is 150 tons and unpumpable ballast which is 150 tons slop sewage because we shall be retaining certain sewage water while in port so i have taken 30 tons and the constant of the ship which is 343 tons Th gives us a maximum loadable quantity of 61,768 metric tons so we can load maximum 61,768 metric tons of cargo so let us load a cargo of 61,678 tons at Murmask and check the displacement at each point in voyage so for me personally and also by common sense there are only two important points in the voyage the first is departure Murmask 
and the second is enhancer port which is the discharge port so in the first table you can see so departure displacement at murmas can be calculated as shown cargo is 61768 and the light ship and the vlsfo lsmgo all quantities added gives you a displacement of 76837 tons which is at 12 meters arrival displacement at hansa port bases the cargo loaded at load port is is as shown whereby the cargo loaded is 61768 the light ship is same vlsfo has changed lsmgo has also changed because we shall be consuming both these fuel during our voyage fresh water we shall be generate generating about 50 tons slop sewage nil unpumpable ballast is same as 150 and constant is also same which gives us a displacement of 76731 tons and draft at above displacement bases the fresh water if you remember is 12.31 meters so let us quickly put all these figures in the table so departure murmansk the maximum displacement allowed is 76837 tons and we have calculated the same quantity uh, we have based our calculation on same displacement so obviously this stage becomes okay i am not calculating the intermediate stages because it is by common sense very clear that you will not be reaching this displacement and this draft because you are already loaded at 12 meters which is 2 meters lesser than what maximum allowed let us jump to hansa port that is a discharge port whereby the arrival displacement is 76731 tons which is way way lesser than the one which is allowed the calculated draft is 12.31 and the allowable was 14.185 so this condition or this stage also becomes okay so you can see the all the stages in the voyage is being complied with so important note which already i have explained to you in my previous video that the cargo quantity determined through dead weight calculation may subject to change depending upon stability conditions obtained during each leg of voyage while using the loadicator and we shall be seeing this once we start to use the loadicator in our next video So what is the conclusion? A conclusion is that a total of sixty-one thousand seven hundred and sixty-eight tons of iron ore pellets can be loaded at load port Murmansk, so that when the vessel departs Murmansk, the vessel will be at twelve meters. So this was a very simple example. So my main idea of taking up this voyage was to give you a idea about taking Eka area also into consideration, which might affect your fuel oil consumption of both grades just in case if you are using VLSFO and LSMG of both so like we said three steps of loading cargo on bulk carriers in this we have completed step number 1 by means of three different voyage instructions three different examples we have solved them completely now after this we shall be moving on to step number 2 we shall be focusing on creating storage plans based on the past three examples which we have solved for step number 1 and we will be starting to use the loadicator the first video will be a little lengthy video i hope i was able to clear most of your doubts but just in case if you have one feel free to mention them in the comment section below or you can directly write to us at ask@funneltotunnel.com you can also send your suggestions and videos or the material which you want us to create for you we will definitely strive in order to make the complex topic very simple for you so that you can understand them in a better way and also do check out our maintenance series which is launching in upcoming weeks thank you so much for watching this video have a great day